So we've all heard by now that our phones are good enough to create videos. But you've also seen those videos where people have shot on their phone, where the focus is changing, the light is changing because they haven't got their settings right. But also a lot of that comes down to the limitations that are in the stock camera apps on iPhone and on Android. So that's where the totally free Blackmagic camera app comes in to fix all of these issues for you and to really allow you to get the most professional looking videos out of your smartphone. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through how to use the Blackmagic camera app, how to get it set up for best results. I'm also gonna share my absolute favorite feature that's built into it if you're someone like me that shoots content on your own. And trust me, this is an absolute game changer. And once you make it to the end of this video, if you are someone that wants to geek out even further and really dive into some of the more advanced features and controls that are in here, we do have a more advanced training as well. And that's linked in the description box below. Now I'm gonna be taking you through on an iPhone, but the process is pretty much exactly the same on Android as well. So this is what you see when you first open up the app. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot of information, a lot of different buttons and things. Don't worry, this will make sense as we go through. But a lot of these across the top here are a quick way for us to access and change these settings as well. So we could just tap on them and then we can customize things up. But I love that all your key critical information and settings is easily displayed here. Things like your microphone volumes. If you've got a microphone plugged in, I don't for this tutorial here, we can see our volumes and everything showing up right on our main screen. And we can see things like how much storage we have on our phone when we're recording too. Over on the side here, we have another panel with lots of other things that we can configure up to really help us dial in our shots. And obviously in the middle here is our big record button. But over on the far right, this app is really broken down into a couple of different modes. We've got our camera mode here, which we're in. We have the media mode, which is where we can play back and preview our clips. There's a chat functionality in here as well if you're signed into the Blackmagic Cloud. And this is probably more for professional shoots where you've got a bunch of people in there or editors that are working remotely. We can have a chat feedback or interaction happening there. And then down here under settings, it's pretty obvious this is where we can customize everything up. And this is actually the area that I would suggest that you start to make sure that everything is set up correctly for you before we jump in to start to frame up our shot and get everything looking right. Now, again, there's a lot in here. I'm not running through every setting. I'm gonna run through the critical ones so that you know where to look, but I would suggest that when you have some time, just click through or tap through so that you can see all the cool stuff that you can actually do in here. And over time, as you use this more, you'll be able to customize it up so you're getting an even better experience. But let's come straight up the top to record. This is where we get to change things like our codec, so our recording format. You can see we've got everything here from H.264 to H.265, which is now the default in here on all new iPhones. But you can see to unlock the highest quality recordings, we've got access to Apple ProRes, even Apple ProRes RAW and RAW HQ. But for that, we will need to have an external storage device connected to our phone because those files are gonna be huge. So if you're not needing that, then just leave this here as default and HEVC. Next up, we can choose our video resolution. So what quality do we wanna record at? I would suggest leaving this here at 4K, but we do also have the option to shoot open gate, which is instead of shooting a widescreen video, it's shooting square effectively, which means that we can easily create a portrait and a landscape video from that one recording and do it much easier. So I'll leave this here at 4K. Down from there, we can dial in our color space as well. You can see the default is Rec 709. Again, if you don't know what this is, you're probably gonna to wanna to leave this here. But we have the option in here now to shoot with Apple Log as well. So if you are someone who's going to be using a more professional tool to edit and color grade and apply a specific look or feel to your videos, then we'd be shooting in Log and we can apply our LUTs and things to that, different looks. I'm gonna leave this as Rec 709. But even just having a quick scroll down here, you can see we've got things like time-lapse recording as well. So I love that that is built in here. Now let's come over to camera because there's a critical setting in here right at the top, enable vertical video. If you wanna shoot portrait or vertical videos, you do need to enable that here so that when you rotate your phone, it's gonna rotate everything and allow you to shoot portrait. So that's a key one. And again, a lot of these other settings here, but the default's probably going to be fine. I like that they've got things like lens correction already enabled. I personally like to leave the lock white balance on record on. So this is when we're recording, it's not gonna change your colors as you maybe move around or as things change into your scene. But if you need it on a full auto mode for this, then we can obviously turn that off too. But again, scrolling down, you can see lots of different options in here. If you're gonna be shooting with the front facing camera and you're gonna have text or you're gonna hold something up with writing on it, then it might be a good idea to mirror the front camera so that the writing isn't backwards. 
Over under audio, this is where we can customize up our microphones and control all of that stuff. Right now I don't have one connected, so it's just set to the iPhone microphone. But if you do have something like a DJI mic connected, then we can control that and select that from in here. So the next one down, monitor. This is where we can again, customize up that main interface. So we can do things in here like turn on or off the display of our audio meters back on the front screen where we can see our volume. I personally like to leave that on. Likewise with the display, how much phone storage we have left, that's on by default, but you can customize this up for you. One I do like to put on though is right down the bottom here, display the battery indicator. So then we know how much phone battery we have, obvious one. Next, if we come over here to media, this is all the settings around the files that we're going to be saving. So I personally don't record proxy files or lower quality versions of the files for the projects I work on. I'd imagine most beginners are not gonna need this setting on. And we also get to choose here where our videos are going to be saved to. So we can see here, save clips to just the app itself. So the media area of the app, or we can save them in the app and to your photo library or we can save them to a specific location in the files area of your phone as well. I'm just gonna leave this here as in-app only. Now, a couple of the quick settings I wanna point out here, function buttons. These are three customizable buttons that you can have on the main area of your recording interface to do what you would like. So if there's a specific setting that you don't have fast access to from the main screen, then we can easily add that. So we can choose here function one, and let's see what we want that to do. Is it gonna apply a preset of settings that we've made and saved, or is this going to toggle a specific setting or feature? So while I don't currently have that set up right now, if you're gonna be using this a lot and you want fast access to things, then this is an amazing feature. There's also settings in here to customize up external accessories. So if you're using a Bluetooth remote to toggle recording, we can set that up in here. Remote camera control, this is an amazing feature that I will dive into a little bit later in the video. This is huge. So let's jump back to the main camera interface here now, and we can start getting this set up for filming. So we're gonna start locking down some of our settings so things aren't changing while we're recording. So the first thing I would recommend you do here is we wanna pick our camera lens. So we can either select on the little camera lens button here, or we can press up here where it says lens 24 mil. So we can press on this, and then we get to choose which camera lens we wanna use. This will be different depending on which phone you're on. I'm on a 17 Pro right now, so I've got lots of different options, but we could go the ultra wide. We could start to zoom in on some of these as well. So we can start by picking the lens that we want by selecting those here from the side. And then we also have zoom control here as well, which we can just tap and swipe, which will kick between some of the different lenses for us. We wanna make sure that our frames per second is set right. So right now I'm shooting 25 frames per second. I'm Australian, that's a common frame rate here. But we could easily switch this to 24 if we were after something cinematic, or 30 is normally a default frame rate when recording on phones. But you can see that as we make an adjustment to this frame rate, that our shutter speed adjusts as well. So if I drop this now back to 25, you can see this making this adjustment for us. And this is because your shutter speed should really be locked to twice your frame rate for the most natural looking videos. So we've got our frame rate set there now. Our shutter speed is set correctly at one over 50, but I'd like to lock it at that so it doesn't change. So I'm gonna press on that. And again, we have a slider here where we can manually adjust these things as well. But I'm gonna leave it here at one over 50, and I'm gonna press the little padlock button here to lock that. So again, if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, this would be one over 60. This will stop any flickering and weird stuff happening from any lights in the scene. And we can see that this is locked because there is a little padlock up here now. So we can see what's locked or what's on automatic modes, again, at a quick glance. Now from there, we can lock down our focus and our exposure, really. So at a minimum, that's what I would be locking down, setting our frame rate and our shutter speed. But if you really don't want things to change while you're shooting, we can lock down some more, like our focus and our exposure as well. And one of the easiest ways to do this is just to tap and hold on the area that we want to expose for and focus on. And you can see that we've got AE, auto exposure, and AF, auto focus, is locked at on whatever it is that we've tapped on. So I could tap in the background here, 
on this Stream Deck. You can see it shifts the focus, it'll adjust the lighting if it needs to, and it's now locked at that point, meaning that if I put my hand in here, nothing is going to change. And if we wanna disable that, we can just tap anywhere on the screen and it's going to come back to auto mode for us. So that's the easiest way, but we can also come across here to our menu here for focusing, which is the second one down. And you can see we've got the option here for auto focus, or we can manually shift this ourselves and pick what we actually want to focus on. Now, if you're doing this manually, this is where there's some great guides and things that are built in here to help you really lock this stuff down. So we could come down to this one here, and this is gonna show us what's actually in focus. So we can drag this up. And we can see anywhere here that is outlined in red, it might be hard to see on the recording, is in focus. So if we go back to adjusting our focus now, then we'll see this change as different things are in and out of focus. And you can actually leave these on while you're recording if you'd like, but they're easy to toggle on and off. So this one here is for your focus peaking. Let's turn that one back off. There's also some in here for exposure as well. So like your zebra lines, where we can see which areas are close to being too bright or overexposed and which ones aren't. So I'll toggle that one back off. Now from there, we can lock down our brightness. So you come over here to ISO, and this is really lower the number, the darker the image, the higher the number, the brighter the image. So we can go as low as 100 in terms of the sensitivity and how much light this is going to pick up. And we can go as high as 3200. But I suggest you keeping this as low as you can. So I'd probably keep it around 200 or 100 if you're filming outdoors in bright areas. So for this one, maybe we'll just go the 200 here. Next, you can lock down your white balance. So the color temperature. So we've got here white balance. We press on this. There's different presets here. So you can obviously start with those or we have a slider here as well where we can dial this in ourselves. Or if we just wanna go back to auto, we can press auto. So that it's going to do an automatic adjustment for us. And then if we like that, then we can just hit the lock and it's not going to change throughout our shot. Now in this case, I'll probably make it a little bit warmer. Let's go to something like that and let's lock it so that it doesn't change. So those are probably the most important settings, but we've also got things in here like stabilization. We can turn that on or off. The default is standard stabilization, but we can increase the stability or the amount of stabilization to cinematic or extreme if you're gonna be moving around a lot. So from there, it's just a matter of just checking that everything is the way that you want it. Obviously looking at the shot is probably the biggest way that you're checking. And then we're just starting and stopping the recording by pressing the button here. Now we can clearly see that we're recording because a few things have gone red to show us that. And this way you're not gonna make that simple mistake where you think you're recording and you press stop, but it's actually starting to record and you just missed it. Yep, I've been there. So we'll stop recording now. But in terms of my favorite feature that is built into this app, it's the remote control, remote monitoring feature. So let's come down to settings. Let's make sure that this is on remote camera control. Let's enable that here. And then it says, do we want to use this iPhone as a controller for another device or is this the camera? So let's go camera. Let's set this as the camera. We will need to give it a name. I've just got something very basic A because we had to put something in. It's asking for a password. Also, I'd probably suggest that you're putting something a little bit better in. And this camera is available for control and for monitoring. But those are the key ones. Let's come back to camera. Then over on the side, and if you're not seeing this menu on the side, there's three little dots that you can click on to bring this up. But we can see this now been activated. We have this remote icon here and it's not grayed out. So now all we need to do is jump over to another iPhone, an Android device, or the thing I'm most excited about is that we can actually do this on a Mac now too. We can install the iPad version of the Blackmagic camera app onto our Mac computers as well. So if I open that up now, you can see here it is. I'm using the webcam. It's just popped that straight through. And it's exactly the same as what we just ran through. Same interface and everything. So we could even just use this for recording on the Mac if we'd like, but the power here is in this remote control function. So if we come across to those three little dots here on the left, and let's choose remote. Then we can see here we've got our available phone camera here listed as well because they are on the same Wi-Fi. So I've got here uh, A, because I gave it a great name, and iPhone 17 Pro, we can enable that. And then we just deselect it here. And this is now the same thing. So we can remotely control it. I could change the camera if we needed to. 
I could change the focus. I can adjust all of the same stuff, but I'm doing it remotely. So where I absolutely love this and doing it from the computer instead of another device is I'm recording directly into the computer or with the computer right next to me. So I don't want to have another phone or an iPad or something as another device. But really this also means that we can use the primary camera on the phone, the back facing camera, but we can control it. We can see what it looks like. We can start and stop recording. We can lock down all of those settings, which also opens us up to using this with a teleprompter as well, where it's gonna be really hard for you to configure everything up, make sure everything's in focus, and to do it all from the other side of the camera. So we're not just limited to now using this Blackmagic camera app, shooting videos ourselves using the front selfie camera. We can now use the primary camera on the back of our device and monitor and control it all remotely. So right now, as far as I know, this feature is only a Mac thing because we're installing the iPad version on the Mac. There might be a way to get the Android version running on Windows, maybe using BlueStacks or one of those emulators. I haven't tried that yet. Let me know in the comments if that's something that does work. And for those of you that wanna dive in even deeper into some of the more advanced stuff that you can do in here, now that you're up to speed at a beginner level, then check out our more advanced training, which we've got linked in the description box below. And we've also got down there for you as well, a free PDF guide to help you film better videos on your iPhone or Android device, taking you through step-by-step, step, a lot of the stuff that we covered in this video, but as a checklist that you can print out and you can follow along so that you're not missing anything and creating better videos easier. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.